Uh, what's your take on the results, Shamita? Well, you know, just 18 months ahead of the 2024 national elections, Prime Minister Modi and his party still look very strong. Um, and uh, we believe that he's set for a third consecutive term in office. So th does it all show that his popularity remains intact and that perhaps, you know, it remains strong ahead of those elections? Uh, yes, absolutely. So even though the BJP um, lost uh, Himachal Pradesh, which is a much smaller state, um, uh, you know, and it has always shown this uh, trend of anti-incumbency in the sense that you know whoever's in power is voted out in the next state election. But you know, Himachal Pradesh is a much smaller state compared to Gujarat, and Gujarat they've achieved the speed of having won every single election since the 1990s. So it's, um, you know, it really shows that Prime Minister Modi's popularity is intact. Um, he is the, uh, you know, the dominant leader in, in the country right now. And the opposition, mm. um, you know, remains in disarray and the vote remains fragmented. You say his popularity is intact. Is it you know, enough for him to push through hard reforms in the country? I think that India's pace of reforms has always been incremental and it continues to be so. And given that we're just one and a half years really away from the 2024 elections, I doubt there's going to be much push on reforms. And if you see uh, you know, take take uh, asset sales for for example. That's one of the uh, reforms that you know that even the government talks about uh, and has made some progress on. But compared to the um, the full year target, uh, the government from April to November has raised only about a third of the target, and this is a far um, uh, sharply revised down target compared to. Last year, and actually, it achieved only eight percent of of the uh, full year target. So, I don't think that there's going to be much of a push on reforms right now. Some of the other reforms, like the labor reforms that were passed in the um, parliament, have still to be implemented at the state level. Um, and there are a lot of uh, uh, you know obstacles to that, given that you know we, we're a uh, you know we, uh, that that state governments um, uh, have have a say on this. And I just don't think that there's going to be too much of a push on reform. If anything, you know, the government is actually going to have to raise spending uh, on welfare schemes, on, uh, you know, capex, uh, public capex, in order to make sure that growth is supported, because we are seeing headwinds, headwinds build up to growth in the coming year. Shamita, okay, does this, these polls indicate, of course, that he may do very well in the 2024 elections? That's one part of it. But is it really also, ultimately, that there's not a credible opposition and you've got a fragmented opposition here as well, which, is, which should give him wiggle room? Yes, exactly. You know, I think that a key um, uh, precondition for making sure that the government delivers on its promises is a very credible opposition and a, and a strong opposition. And we're just, you know, that's just missing in, in India right now. Uh, and I think that, um, you know, even though investors favor broad political stability, one really has to uh, understand that, you know, the pace of reforms, as I said, in India has always been slow and gradual. And I just don't think that there's any change to that, even though we are set for a third consecutive term of the, of the same government. And Jamita, what should be at the top of his reform list? Well, there's so many things. <laughs> you know, I mean, there is, there's, a, there's a list that has been there forever, and every government has known what, what is to be done. Um, but I think that the key uh, thing is to make sure that uh, infrastructure investment picks up. And I think we will see a push on that in the, in the coming budget. Uh, every year, though, they, do they talk about it, and the problem is really implementing it on the ground. Um, so I think that, you know, India just continues to move at a, at a certain pace. It's sort of disappointing as far as, uh, you know, the, the potential is concerned. But at the same time, you know, we, we happen to be the fastest growing country in the world, and, and it is going to retain that status, uh, you know, possibly even next year. Um, so I, I think that the um, the key thing is to make sure that there is enough uh, capex going into infrastructure, uh, ensuring that you know that investments yep. keep coming in. Um, but I, you know, I just don't. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, it's on exactly that point I wanted to ask you. Okay, investment keeps coming in, foreign investment in particular. Uh, and of course, if you build it, quite literally in this case, uh, they may come. But what else does he need to do to smooth the wheels of uh, foreigners who want to come into the Indian market? I think that the government has been doing regulatory reforms, and these are easy to um, enforce and, and implement. And I think that they will continue doing that. Um, I don't think that there are really any big bang reforms that that can happen at this point in time. So I think that you know this is we have to expect that there is going to be a slow pace, you know, gradual reforms, a little by little. And I don't think that we should actually put any big lists out or uh, you know expect that there is going to be any uh, you know huge big reform. As I said, stake sales are happening little by little. Uh, bank, there is a bank privatization that is that is underway. It's only going to be completed in the next fiscal year uh, and uh, you know, the, the labor reforms I think that that is a key structural reform that needs to that needs to happen uh, but I just don't see it happening before at least uh, the the third term uh, you know of, of Modi's governance happens. Uh, Shamita, there are big concerns in the economy. We have uh, rising unemployment, rising inflation. Might those issues weigh on Modi's popularity? Well, given that there isn't any big opposition, I don't think that it does. I think that, you know, Modi's popularity is really very much, uh, you know, uh, uh, he has a cult of personality and um, of religi religious identity, as well as uh, welfare schemes that he has very effectively uh, pushed through. Um, so I, so there are these headwinds, and we keep talking about them, and there, there are concerns that, you know, inflation remains persistently high. And job creation just is not uh, is not uh, you know there enough. Um, we are seeing, of course, a pickup in economic activity given the uh, post-pandemic demand res resurgence. Uh, but yes, you know, unemployment still remains at at around eight percent, and um, a job creation is a very big long-term concern, as is the increasing inequality in India, um, you know, given that the pandemic has actually exacerbated previous trends of, of widespread regional disparities.